Yo guys, welcome to the Zelda Fiction. Today we are gonna see, what if Naruto got exiled and got Harem Koyuki, Anko, Mei. Part 1. Huge shout out to Stealth Master for this story. If you end up liking this video, please consider subscribe, so without further ado, let's get into the video. The figure sighed as he looked at the scroll that had arrived at noon. It contained details of the fourth shinobi war that had occurred in the elemental nations, but surprisingly, it wasn't hidden villages against each other. In fact it was all five great hidden villages, as well as all the other smaller hidden villages against Akatsuki and the Hidden Sound Village. Turns out both Madara Ichiha and Orochimaru bolstered their forces with missing nins and thugs to rival the other hidden villages in terms of manpower, and it seemed that they were winning, especially since they were using the biju that they extracted out of their Jinchiriki. So far they had the Ichibi, Sanbi, Yanbi, Gobi, Rikubi and the Hachibi, but they didn't have the Nibi, Nanabi or the Kubi. Nibi's Jinchiriki was cornered by Akatsuki, but then a stranger came and literally obliterated the Akatsuki members Haiden and Kakazu, following that the Jinchiriki just disappeared of the face of the elemental nations. The Nanabi's Jinchiriki was a different story. She was being hunted by her own villagers who wanted to beat her for being a Jinchiriki, but after she had rounded into an alleyway, she found a dead end. When they were about to attack her though they were slaughtered and the Jinchiriki was gone. Finally the QB's Jinchiriki simply vanished after he had been exiled. Many people had looked for him, but they had no luck in finding him. That was 10 years ago, Naruto thought as he sighed again as he contemplated on what to do. So far the scroll had stated that they would like an alliance to combat the Akatsuki and Orochimaru, however, in order to make it more persuasive, they even added in how likely they were to attack his own nation, once the elemental nations were overrun. Now after that subtle message Naruto had half a mind to refuse the alliance after all his nation was so far away, that by the time they arrived, they would be tired and not effective in combat. That, and the barrier that shuts down the chakra in a person's body, would render them useless in battle. You see the world was split into two continents. The East and the West. The East became known as the Elemental Nations, and the West recently became known as the United Whirlpool Nation. The reason for the division was because during the fight between the Rakuto Senen and the Jubi, the Jubi unleashed a strange attack that made all the inhabitants in the West lose their chakra and their chakra network. After the battle people who could use chakra started seeing those who couldn't as inferior, and eventually prejudice started to grow. Only the Shodaime Hokage, the Senju clan and the Uzumaki clan, saw them as regular people, but eventually it wasn't enough to stop the hatred, so they asked the Shodaime to split the land in half and send them far away. After some tough resistance from the Shodaime he eventually agreed. Then using his control over wood the Shodaime split the land in half. His brother Tabarama Senju then used his control over water to push the west far away, so that it would be extremely difficult to cross between the two, bordering impossible. In the end it made both of them very tired and had to spend a little while in a hospital to recover from the effort. Back to the present when Naruto arrived and united the west, he decided to make it better if not through chakra than technology. The result was absolutely stunning. Buildings made of bricks and metal instead of wood, weapons that made the Yandaime Hokage's Horation look primitive, a navy that dwarfs the wooden boats the East use, medical facilities were more efficient than even Tsunade, communications that made the East shortwave radios, became toys that were beaten by kids, walkie-talkies, and overall everyone was happy. And. Imagine the continent with cities along the edge that faces the East with the suburbs just behind them and the countryside behind them. There was no crime or corruption, all of it wiped out before it could fester and grow. People were supportive of just about everything he did. His title as leader of the United Whirlpool Nation was sort of passed down through the family, but if they were seen as not worthy, then another would be chosen. Once chosen though they would permanently stay in as leader and no one can remove them and all the decisions are final, nobody else could defy them. Looking through the pros and cons of the proposition he saw a chance at gaining something from this. Then he placed the scroll down onto his desk made of oak and glanced around his office. It was painted white and had a kind of government feel to it. At one end of the room was his desk and large leather chair, large windows behind him showed the view of his nation that he ruled, and also a flag of his nation, which was white with the Uzumaki clan symbol in the center. In front of him were two leather couches that were perpendicular to his desk with a small table between them. On the other end of the room was the only door that the room had. Looking back on his life he absently thought back to the day he was exiled, after he had successfully completed his mission to bring back his old teammate, Sasuke Ichiha. Flashback. Naruto sat in a chair in the middle of Konoha's council room. After being healed of his wounds he was curious as to why he was here. He had already filed his report away, so why be summoned here and specifically only him, wouldn't Shikamaru be a better choice because of his status as the leader at the time. Looking around he noticed the civilian council were looking smug, whilst the shinobi council and the hokage were looking sad. 
Okay not a good sign, he thought. Whatever was going on it wouldn't end well for him that was a definite. An elderly man wrapped in bandages, Danzo Shimura his name was, then stood up and addressed the Yuzumaki. Naruto Yuzumaki. Due to inflicting a nearly fatal injury to your target Sasuke Uchiha, we have decided that you be banished and that all that connects you to Kano has stripped from you. In addition to this your ability to form hand seals will be taken away from you, as well as all of your possessions, and finance will be confiscated and given to Sasuke Uchiha as compensation. He stated smugly as Naruto was given chakra absorbing handcuffs and then dragged out of the room before he could even comprehend or object to what had happened. Time skip. Next day. It was the evening for when his banishment was scheduled, and during that time he had time to think about what had happened to him. He had completed his mission and had almost gotten killed by someone he thought was his brother in bond. Turns out that it had all been a ploy so that he could gain the Manjekyo Sharingan and that he never really thought as Naruto as a brother, only as a tool to further his ambition to kill his brother. It was then that he also realized that his so-called crush Sakura Hirano had only used his feelings for her in order to get what she wanted, even if it meant him sacrificing himself. Safe to say his crush for the pink-haired banshee stopped there and had no intention of returning. Soon though he received numerous visits from certain people. Almost the entire Kanoha 12, now 11, came down and berated him for being a dope. Sasuke even punched him in the chest for good measure, Sakura punched him in the head and called him a failure, both Hinata and Niji gave him some Jukin blows that were painful but not lethal, Ino kicked him when he was on the floor, Kiba had Akamari urinate on him, and Tenten cut him with some of her kunai. The only ones of the Kanoha 11 to not turn up were Chaoji, Shikamaru, Lee and Shino. Taoji was too kind to blame him for anything, Shikamaru was too smart to be bought into it, Lee just didn't like hitting people who couldn't fight back, especially when said person was a dope like him, and Shino was also too smart to be brought into it. By the end Naruto was still very much alive but in pain and smelling like urine. His suffering hadn't finished there though as his sensei, Kakashi Hataki, came down and scolded him for hurting his teammate. He didn't even care to notice the state of his student before he declared that he was no longer a student of his, that if he ever said he was a student of his then he would deny it and walked away from the broken boy before he could even say a thing. After a couple of hours it was time for his banishment and he was roughly grabbed and dragged through the village. Along the way he was greeted with jeers and insults from villagers, Shinobi and his peers. Then one of the villagers became more bold by throwing a tomato at his head and then more joined in. When they reached the gates he was covered in all kinds of rotten food. They then had Danzo apply the seal to his arms to prevent him from forming the hand seals for Jutsu, and just before he left, he glanced back to notice the seldom looks from Tsunade, Shizune, Hiroka, Shino, Shikamaru, Chaoji, Lee, Asuma, Gai, Kurinai, Anko Midarashi, Kinohamaru, Odin, Mogi, Tuchi and Aim. From that alone he knew who were friend and who were foe. He then ran as fast as he could away from the village, with many people cheering, as his form disappeared from sight down the paved road. And flashback. Half a year later he had been reversed summoned by the Toad Elders Fukasaku and Shima to ask him why he hadn't summoned any of them in a such a long time. After he explained to them about his banishment, resulting with some very angry Toad Elders, he asked them to cancel his contract with them so that he couldn't be found by Kanoha easily if they wanted to hunt him down for any non-reasonable excuses. They had been sad to realize the logic but accepted it even though they asked if he could meet the Great Toad Sage as a goodbye. The great toad sage sighed when he was told about the cancellation, though he did say that he somewhat predicted it would happen. His vision had said that something would happen to one of their summoners that would affect them greatly and told him about the child of the prophecy. He even let a small tear out but accepted it as well, though he said that as a parting gift they would teach him senjutsu to combat his lack of hand seals. At the end of the training he had mastered senjutsu and learned sealing as well. He had tried using his knowledge to remove the seal that prevented his use of hand seals but discovered something horrible. The seal used hadn't been the standard one used on people who were banished. Instead this one destroyed his ability to use hand seals completely, so that meant he could forever no longer use hand seals and would have to rely on other ways to compensate for it. Namely weapons, fuinjutsu and tojutsu. Before he set off again the toads gave him the key to his seal that held the QB telling him that it was his since it wouldn't be safe with them as Jiraiya could take it with him at any time and that he could use it to reverse summon him as well if he couldn't do it via toads. And. Remember Jiraiya was not mentioned in the flashback, meaning nobody knows his reaction to Naruto's banishment yet. Soon after that he saved Yujito Nai, Nibi's container, and Fu, Nanabi's container, from both the Akatsuki and her own village respectively. They then traveled together and became very close. Five years after his banishment they became a couple with Yujito and Fu becoming Naruto's girlfriends. Another year later they married and decided to go to the west to get away from the hidden villages and the Akatsuki. 
On their arrival the place was just as conflicted as the East, but this changed as they traveled across it helping people along the way. Eventually they united the continent and the United Whirlpool Nation was born. Naruto gained the title Yuzukage, and his two second-in-commands were his wives Yujito and Fu, who became well-favored by everyone. The three also became the only chakra users that the West respected. Now with this alliance I could demand from my clan's heritage back that was stolen by the fire daimyo. Naruto thought with a scowl in place. Now some would think he was talking about Minato Namikaze, his father, but he was actually talking about his mother, Kishina Yuzumaki. You see when Yuzushi Agakur was destroyed by a combined effort of Iwa and Kumo, the Land of Fire's daimyo came in and claimed the land as his own without any consent from the survivors, and threatened any all of them with his large army of samurais that forced the survivors to flee. The reason his mother went to Konoha was because she thought she could get help from the Sandeami to stop the daimyo. Her plea was left unanswered as the Sandeami didn't want to risk a civil war that could be taken advantage of by the other nations, but stayed in Konoha as a necessity. Then due to her being the only Uzumaki in Konoha other than Mito Uzumaki, she had to become the second Jinchuriki to the QB no Kitsune. Later on she fell in love with Minato when he saved her from Kumonin, who wanted her for her special chakra that could subdue a Biju, and soon fell pregnant with Naruto. Then on the day of his birth the QB was ripped out of Kishina by Madara Chiha, and his father was forced to seal it inside of him, when it was obvious the QB wouldn't stop rampaging, even after the game Jutsu on it had been released. Naruto wanted to take back what was his, especially since it was taken by someone who had no rights to it in the first place, but he wanted to do it without putting his nation at risk. The country had only been around for four years, and some were still affected by the violence that existed before them. He didn't want to cause harm to his country because of him being selfish, no matter how many times he could be. Onto why he didn't want his father's inheritance was because there was no longer any to be claimed. Reason being his father had placed a blood and time seal on the inheritance that prevented people from touching it without Naruto's blood, and if it wasn't done by the time he was 18, then the seal would destroy his inheritance to prevent anyone else from getting their hands on his jutsu. The reason why he knew about his parents without being told by anyone who knew at the time was because his own parents had told him when he tried to control the QB. They told him everything from his inheritance to the events that led to the QB's attack. At first he was angry at his father for the problems the QB gave him and even said that he wouldn't take the Namikaze name, but he did understand why he did it and would say he was his son. The only problem was that he would be taking on his Yuzumaki side of the family as he had been brought up on the name Yuzumaki and that the Namikaze inheritance had been destroyed by the time blood seal on it too soon for him to do anything about it. His father had been sad that he couldn't pass on his Horatian Jutsu to him but admitted it was for the best because it wouldn't do good if someone like Sasuke Ichiha got his hands on it. His mother though was ecstatic that her son would be following in her footsteps by specializing in weapons and fuenjutsu. She also told him that if he wanted to learn how to use her chakra chains, then he would need to find the ruins of Yuzushi Agakur and locate the scroll she hid that also contained her other techniques. After defeating the QB and gaining full control over his chakra, he said goodbye to his parents, which included being hugged by both of his parents, and they left him with tears in his eyes when they told him that they were proud of him and that they would always love him no matter what. They then disappeared, and it was then that he started creating a friendship with QB, who he discovered was called Karama, and made his conditions more hospitable in the seal. Sighing again he pressed the intercom to his wives and said, Yujito-chan, Fu-chan can you come here please? Sure Narito-kun. Then minutes later his door opened and in stepped his two wives. Yujito wore dark blue jeans with a picture of a pink cat paw at the bottom of her right leg, white trainers, a white t-shirt that covered her cup breasts, and had styled her hair in a bandaged tail that went down to the small of her back. Also on her were various exercise equipment for monitoring oneself, i.e. hair trait monitor and a watch. Following her was Fu who wore similar to Yujito except it had a butterfly on her jeans, and she wore a red t-shirt that covered her cup breasts. Other than that though they wore exactly the same. And. I am not going to talk about facial features. If you don't know look it up. What did you want to talk about Naruto-kun? Yujito asked as they both sweated slightly. Throwing the scroll to them, to which Fu caught they opened it to read the contents. A series of emotions played across their faces, most notably confusion, coldness then finally anger. Throwing the scroll back to him Fu told him what they felt about the alliance. How dare they try to involve us into their war and instead of making us worry they should have just come clean and say that they need our help badly. Fu stated loudly. Yeah after everything that they have done to innocent people they dare say that they are justifiable. Especially to Jinchuriki. They treated us like vermin. In fact only Killer B got any kind of recognition and that only happened when he was in his late 30s, Kumo was under attack and he almost died in the process. Yujito added. 
Running a hand through his still spiky blonde hair he replied with a sigh, yeah I know, but there are still people who are being harmed because of Madara and Orochimaru, and to be honest, I would rather choose the lesser of the two evils here. The hidden villages may have hurt innocent lives as well, but most of that I know was done unintentional. The only time that didn't happen was with us containers specifically and not everyone in general. Both Yujito and Fu's expression softened at that. Despite the harm done to him by Kanoha he was still willing to ally with them if it meant the safety of innocent people. It was one of those qualities that made people open up to him or try to befriend him. What Kanoha had done was throw away a diamond in the rough, and in the end what was Kanoha's loss became the West's gain. Thinking over it a little more they looked at each other for a moment before nodding back to him, to which he pressed a different button on the intercom that connected him to the communications department. Buki-san, can you please send a message to Kanoha to tell them that I will meet them and the other Kages about an alliance at the Naha port, and that is an actual in Japan. If you were wondering, in Karigakur two days from now. Also inform them the reason why the Naha port was chosen was because of the amount of space needed for our arrival. Naruto said as he took his finger off the button. A second later he heard a female's voice reply back. Yes Yuzuka gay sama right away. The intercom then went silent. After that was over he walked over towards his wives and gave them both a kiss on the lips before flashing to their shared room in the Yuzuka Gay's mansion. For that night the mansion of the Yuzuka Gay was allowed with moans and sounds of flesh smacking flesh. One day later in Kanoha. Tsunade sat behind her desk in the Hokage Tower in worry as she held the letter that had arrived from the Owen, shortened version of United Whirlpool Nation, that morning. Standing in the room with her were the other four Kages. Mei Turumi the Mizukagi. Enoki the Tsuchikage. Gara no Sabaku the Kazikage. Finally there was A the Raikage. Standing with them also was Mifune the samurai leader of the Land of Iron and representative of the smaller hidden villages that couldn't have a Kage. Looking at the letter in front of them on the desk they studied it and if they were honest, it looked weird to them. Instead of a sealed scroll they got a light brown rectangular envelope that was sealed on the back. The address read. Tsunade Senju, Hokage. Hokage Tower. Hanahagakur. Elemental Nations. Then in the top right hand corner was a blue stamp with a white swirl in the center. Looking to her fellow Kages in confusion, she asked them what was on their mind. Well it seems that they have started using alternate means of communication, but let's see what they sent back. May offered, receiving numerous nods the room's other occupants. Turning over the letter and breaking the seal Tsunade took out the reply and read it aloud for everyone to hear it. Dear leaders of the elemental nations. I have recently received your letter containing the want for an alliance, and I must say it was a shock to say the least. I have given it consideration and have decided that an alliance may be possible if we talked face to face, so I will meet all of you at the Naha port in Kurigakur tomorrow in the evening, the reason for this is because of the space needed for our arrival. Also I will be bringing some guards with me for protection, so feel free to bring some along as well. On a more serious note, please do not send any ninja through unauthorized, or it will be taken as an act of aggression on your side, and an alliance will be impossible. Yours sincerely. And you. Izuka Gay of the United Whirlpool Nation. Just below that was another swirl, only red instead of white. I have seen that swirl before. Anoki muttered as he saw a look of recognition appear on the faces of the Raikage and Hokage as well, though the reason was different. That's the symbol of Konoha. Who does he think he is using our symbol? When he comes here I should demand he remove it and pay compensation to us for forgery. Tsunade ranted until she was interrupted by a cough from the Raikage and the Tsuchikage. Actually Tsunade don't know it is the other way around. A said as he saw Tsunade raise an eyebrow in confusion. Seeing A's reluctance to continue because of his predecessor's mistakes, Anoki decided to pick up from there. You see Tsunade don't know that symbol originally came from the Yuzumaki clan and Yuzushiagakur. Due to their close connection with the Senju clan, the Yuzumaki clan gave permission to Kanoha to use their symbol as a sign of friendship. The symbol is now shown on the leaf headbands and on the back of the Chunin and Jonin flak vests. Also the last initial of his name is Yu, this could mean Yuzumaki. So whoever this NU is they could very well have all rights to the symbol, even retire it if they want to. The reason why Raikage Dono here is reluctant to continue is because during the Third Shinobi War Kumo tried to kidnap an Yuzumaki, but was foiled by the Yandaime Hokage, who was a Chunin, and. Was he a Chunin at the time? At the time. Anoki finished as he saw the embarrassed blush that the Hokage was now adorning. It shouldn't have been news to her, especially since she was the Hokage and a Senju to boot. It was then that Tsunade realized how important the Yuzumaki were to Kanoha's founding. Without them the Senju and Ichiha would have never found a neutral country to negotiate in and would have kept on fighting. How when Madara first used the QB to attack Kanoha Mito Yuzumaki, her own grandmother, sealed it within herself to protect them. 
Then the abuse that one Naruto Uzumaki suffered at the hands of a village that prides itself on his symbol. Finally the fact that the academy didn't teach anything about the Uzumaki clan was the salt added to the injury. Konoha had taken everything that belonged to the Uzumaki clan, yet gave nothing in return, claimed what was the Uzumakis's as their own, and abused the last of its members. It was one of the most awful betrayals that could be committed in the elemental nations. How is he supposed to get there the next day? It took three days for the scroll to reach him. How is he going to cross the sea that splits the east and west apart, it's nearly impossible for us to cross it. May stated wanting to get back to the topic at hand. Shaking her head to clear her thoughts, she made a mental note to right the wrongs Konoha has made. Starting with the Yuzumaki clan. I don't know maybe they'll surprise us again. For now though I think it best that we retire for the day, and we all should meet at the Naha port tomorrow evening as it said in the reply. Mifune said as he bowed in respect and left along with the other Kages. After bidding the other leaders goodbye, she looked at current Jonans to decide who were best to bring along. Ichiraku Raymond stand. The stand was unusually quiet as the customers ate their food in silence. Before Naruto's banishment this place used to be filled with laughter from friends and family, after his banishment, it became as quiet as a ghost town. When they got the news Tucci threw out anybody who insulted his favorite customer, and his daughter Am had locked herself in her room and didn't come out for a whole day, apparently she had had a small crush on the blonde, but didn't do anything because of his crush on Sakura at the time. Afterwards she was cold to all of the Konoha 11 who bad Midor had a hand in Naruto's suffering. Inside the bar sitting on the bar stools to the Raymond stand were Hinata and Niji Hyuga, Kiba Inuzuka and his partner Akimaru, Ino Yamanaka and Tenten. All of them had depressed auras about them, as they constantly reminded themselves of the pain they had caused to Naruto, just before he was banished, since today would be the 10-year anniversary that it occurred. I still can't forgive myself for abusing him like that. I mean we all thought that Naruto had almost killed the team when we caught word of how badly wounded he was. Not once did we think that Naruto himself would be wounded. Kiba said, with Akamaru whining in agreement. I know and then when Tsunade called us to ask us about his condition before leaving, Saab we told her, and then said we were glad we did it, Saab. Hinata sobbed as she couldn't get rid of the look of betrayal from the blonde when she and the others had delivered their punishment. Niji rubbed the back of his cousin as she sobbed with her back hunched. Truth be told if anyone suffered the most out of them it was Hinata. The girl had a huge crush on Naruto since the academy and didn't have the courage to ask him out. Now she most likely never will have a chance with him, since despite Naruto giving her confidence at the Chunin exam she didn't return it. Instead she, along with himself, used a painful but non-lethal Juken strike to slowly torture him along with the others. In fact when A.M. and Tucci heard about their involvement, they banned them along with Sakura and Sasuke from stepping foot in the stand. Out of the whole Konoha 11 at the time only Shikamaru, Shino, Chaoji and Lee were still allowed to eat there. Eventually, after many apologies and begging, Hinata, Niji, Kiba, Ino and Tenten were allowed back into the stand, but were now treated with indifference until Naruto said otherwise. That in itself was unlikely to happen since he wasn't allowed in the village anymore. Thinking about Naruto made them recollect the meeting they had with Tsunade just after Naruto's banishment. Flashback. After Naruto had been forced to leave, Tsunade called all of the Rookie Nine and Team Guy and their sensei to appear in her office to discuss the Sasuke retrieval mission. Which brings us to the now filled up Hokage's office. Tsunade herself sat behind her desk, with her elbows leaning on the desk, her fingers interlocked, that consequently hit her mouth slightly, and had a serious look about her. In front of her stood the, now, Kanoha 11 with their sensei behind them respectively. On her far left were Team Guy, Team 8 on her close left, Team 7 on her close right, and Team 10 on her far right. Looking at each team briefly she decided it was time to begin the meeting. Okay as you all know just minutes ago Naruto Uzumaki was banished for hurting Sasuke Ichiha on the retrieval mission that finished recently. Now before Naruto was put in a holding cell he was perfectly healthy and fit, now the thing was when he was being escorted to the gates I noticed several things. Firstly he had had his tenketsu in his stomach closed off, that can very painful. Secondly he had bruising around his chest area from a puncher kick, as well as similar bruising to his head. Thirdly he had multiple scars on his arms from what looked like kunai wounds. Lastly he smelled of dog urine when he walked by me. Now can anyone here tell me why he was in that condition when you were the last ones to see him in his cell? She questioned them in a tone that said she knew who did it and just wanted them to deny it. Sasuke snorted by saying, yeah we did it. I punched him in chest, Sakura the head, and Ino kicked him when he fell to the ground, Hinata and Niji closed his tenketsu, and Tenten cut him up with her kunai. What does it matter though? After all he did deserve it for almost killing me. Dot. This shocked Tsunade, even more so when said Shinobi nodded their heads in agreement. Raising her eyebrow she decided to get more information. 
And didn't they stop to think that Naruto had been hurt as well? She questioned as the previously mentioned people looked confused at what she meant. However this time it was Shikamaru who answered. Hokage-sama. I thought there was more to it along with Shouji, Shino and Lee. So we went to Shizune to ask about his injuries. Naruto was already in a prison cell at the time. After we found out about his injuries we ran as fast as we could to stop the others, but it was too late as they had already tortured and visiting hours had ended with them. Shikamaru finished explaining as those who didn't know about Naruto's condition widened their eyes at the revelation. All but one that is. Oh please what could the dobe have had suffered at my hands when he showed her a sengen into my chest that burned away my skin. Sasuke stated with a snobbish tone. How about a punctured lung from Ichidori? Tsunade countered as everyone's, except for those who already knew and Sasuke and Sakura, eyes widened in horror at the realization of what they had done to the blonde ex shinobi. They had jumped to conclusions without getting the full story from both sides. Bakashi felt like he was just as bad as the villagers who had abused Naruto because of the QB, it was worse because it had been his jutsu that Sasuke had used to force Naruto to use the Rasengan, and then he had the audacity to scold Naruto that badly. I mean he thought he told Sasuke to not use that jutsu on comrades, but it seemed that he didn't listen, and Naruto paid the price for it. In more ways than one. Winato sensei Kishina Nichin. I'm a horrible person. I took everything you taught me and threw it out the window. Same with Abito, he said that comrades who abandon others are worse than trash, and I did exactly that with Naruto. I failed you all. Kakashi inwardly sobbed. On the outside only a lone tear fell out of his exposed eye, as well as his body started shaking slightly. Quickly before anyone could talk to him he shunshined to his apartment where he proceeded to cry himself to unconsciousness. When Kakashi shunshined everyone, minus Tsunade and surprisingly the remaining Jonin sensei, wondered why the copycat nin disappeared. Tsunade looked towards the Jonin sensei and noticed that they too had come to the same conclusion that Kakashi must have done something to Naruto as well the genin, but not physical. Once a moment had passed the genin remembered how each one of them slowly tormented the blonde and the look of betrayal and extreme sadness in his eyes as they stabbed a piece of his soul with every second of their punishment. Denton, Ino and Hinata dropped to the floor sobbing and crying at the pain they caused unnecessarily to one of their friends that could very well have totally ended their ties with him. Niji, Kiba and Akamaru bowed their heads in shame as they felt the glaring gazes of their sensei on their backs. Shikamaru, Chaoji, Shino and Lee just looked at their comrades get swallowed up by their shame. To be honest they didn't want them to suffer, but they needed to learn the lessons of think before acting and that actions have consequences. They were disgusted though when Sasuke smirked in his usual arrogant way. So I did more damage because my jutsu was stronger, HN, shows the dope was nothing more than that. That's where you're wrong Achiha. Tsunade said cutting off the raven-haired nin. Seeing this caused the Achiha to a confused and angry expression that made Tsunade give a small grin in triumph. You see Achiha at one point in the past Jureya told me of when he and Kakashi did the same thing. The outcome was that Kakashi had the same wound as you and Jureya told me that he had to hold back or it would have killed Kakashi. Therefore Naruto held back in order to not kill you so that he could bring you back alive. Tsunade finished as both Sasuke and Sakura scowled at the news. Sakura was about to yell something, but was stopped by the glare and killing intent, Kai, being directed at her from the busty blonde Kage. Okay now that that has been taken care of I must issue punishments to some of you because of your reckless and violent actions. Naruto was inside a prison cell, and unless being interrogated all prisoners must not be subject to verbal or physical pain. You all did both, therefore your punishment will be no new training from anybody, clans and family included, you may though train in what you already know. Next you will only take D-ranked missions for the next 6 months and will not be allowed to take part in the Chunin exams that also will take place in 6 months. This will apply to Sasuke Ichiha, Sakura Haruno, Hinata Hyuga, Kiba Inuzuka, along with Akamaru, Niji Hyuga and Tenten. Kakashi Hataki will be given his punishment next time I summon him. In the meantime Shino Aburami, Chaoji Akamichi and Rock Lee will form a temporary team to enter the Chunin exams if their sensei are willing to agree at the time. Dismissed. Tsunade informed everyone in an official tone as the Jonins vanished via Shunshin and the Genin and the newly promoted Chunin walked out the door. Then flashback. The next day they had heard that the elders of the council had barged into the Hokage's office and demanded that the Achiha be pardoned of his punishment. The Hokage's response was to be thrown out of her office by herself and told in a cold tone to not just barge into her office like they owned the place. She also added that she would not lift the Achiha's punishment no matter what they said or did. From there on they had started to see how pampered and arrogant the Achiha was. 
Later on they heard that Kakashi had been punished by being forbidden from reading his Icha Icha series for six months, and he would be given many other punishments if he was even late by one minute to any meeting for the same period of time. Many of the Konoha Eleven thought it was unfair, but they discovered that Kakashi had only verbally abused Naruto, not physically and so couldn't be punished as severely as them. What really was eventful was when we found out about the QP and his heritage, when Jiraiya-sama stormed into Tsunade-sama's office when he heard the news of Naruto banishment. Niji added as he remembered how pissed the Sanin was when he arrived. It had been one year since Naruto's banishment and the Konoha Eleven and the Konoha Maru Corps had just finished a joint D-rank mission when the man all but blasted the doors off their hinges and then proceeded to shout out why Naruto's name had been erased from the Toad contract and how could she had let Naruto's banishment happen. She replied that she couldn't control the decision made when even the Hyuga clan supported the motion. Jiraiya had then yelled out how Naruto was now a target for Akatsuki. In his haste he had forgotten that the Konoha Eleven had been present and after being pressured by them, they eventually broke and told them about the QB being sealed inside of him since birth. All of the Konoha Eleven, minus Sasuke and Sakura and the Konoha Maru Corps were shocked at the news and soon had a newfound respect for Naruto when they remembered how badly his mission records were. Soon though it dawned on them that some of them were just as bad as the villagers since they did exactly the same thing to him when he was being held in a prison cell. Sasuke and Sakura though had believed that he was the QB itself and continued to badmouth him. Soon Sakura made a comment about how his parents were likely a drunk and a prostitute. She had then been violently slammed against wall by an angry toad sage who yelled out his parents were great ninja. This had raised questions from everyone except Tsunade about how he knew Naruto's parents when nobody else did. He then couldn't avoid it and told them that his parents were the Yandaime Hokage and the Chishio no Habanero. The reactions were mixed Sakura and Sasuke denied it, saying that they were geniuses and he was a dope. The others though saw the connections that made him reflect the two people. He had the same blue eyes and spiky hair of the Yandaime, but had the facial structure and personality of the Chishio no Habanero, plus the fact it was known that Kishina was Minato's wife and that her name was Yuzumaki, it made all of them even more ashamed of themselves. The Genins and Kakashi because they realized how they had just spat on their hero's legacies. The Kanoichi all looked up to Kishina, and the Shinobi had all adored the Yandaime. Tenten had then asked why he had failed three times to which Tsunade responded that the first two times he was sabotaged to fail and that the Sandeami hadn't picked up on. His actual results would have been about average had they not been tempered with and because he would achieve sometimes in school, parents would arrange mobs to beat the boy whenever he did something well. This had then given him the impression that succeeding was bad behavior, so when it came down to their generation it was already too late, he had completely forgotten training, and nothing Aruka did encouraged him to try working hard again. This made many of the Jonin sensei despise themselves, as they had assumed that Naruto was a clown that did what he did because he could. Not because he needed to do it for his survival or that he was conditioned to be like that, especially when they heard how he passed and became a genin. Then when the other nations heard about Naruto's banishment, they started cutting off ties with us. First was Wave, then Snow, then T and we almost lost Sand as well if it wasn't for Gara, saying that Naruto wouldn't want him to abandon the few people who were nice to him. Though our alliance is greatly strained and even though they will still help us in a war they will not aid us in any way in peacetime. Ino said as they briefly remembered how furious Gara had been when he got the news of Naruto's banishment. His Sand had nearly on instinct killed the council if it wasn't for his sister, who calmed him down. Bara then proposed that when Naruto met him again, he would allow Tamari to marry him, since apparently she had had a small crush on the boy as well, when the Chunin exams finished. He then also stated how if he was to meet Naruto again, then it would be his choice on if he should stay with Konoha or not. It had caused an uproar with the civilian council, but after a burst of Kai from the Hokage, they promptly shut up. Then when the Yandai Mei's possessions destroyed themselves and Naruto's heritage was fully revealed. The council tried to bring him back, but because he cut off his ties to the toads we can't find him. Not that I blame him. Ino continued until the rest of them had finished eating. Yeah well now you know to get the whole story, instead of doing something based on only one side and not looking further into it. Tucci stated passively as he took their now empty bowls of ramen and gave them the bill for the food. Sighing the Chunins and Jonin, Niji is the only Jonin along with Shino, Shikamaru, Tamari and Kankuro, paid for their meals and left the stand with gloom looks. As they pushed the curtains aside to walk out into the street, they saw a thoughtful Kakashi walking past them and surprisingly without his erotic novels that Jiraiya wrote. The man himself had his head tilted to look at the floor holding his chin in his left hand and his other hand in his pocket as he walked through the crowd. Kakashi sensei what is it that has caused you to be seen without your porn? They not have your favorite itcha itcha. Kiba joked in the hopes of lifting everyone's spirits up and get back to the present instead of dwindling on the past.
said Joan and looked at them and his exposed eye closed in what people could only interpret a smile. Hi there Kiba and no that is not the reason. Apparently the Kages are trying to ally with the United Whirlpool Nation, and it would appear that Guy and I have been selected to be Tsunade Sama's guards for the meeting. The other Kages and the representative of the minor nations will also have two guards with them. Kakashi informed them. The response he got were many confused expressions being directed his way. Kiba though was the one to ask the question that was won their mind. What? Why do we need the help of a country that can't even use chakra? I mean they won't be of much help since they can't even perform jutsu right. Lee may not be able to use chakra, but he could at least use the eight inner gates, whereas those of the West can't. The thing though Kiba is that our leaders have come up with a hypothesis that the West have developed in a way we might not have imagined. An example of this would be that the Kages received the Owen's reply to their scroll today and that it stated that it had been sent the day before. That kind of journey would normally take three days to arrive, but they did it in a third of the time. So I will I have to get ready to meet the Hokage at the gates tomorrow morning, so, Jana. Kakashi replied as he continued walking towards his apartment to prepare for the eminent meeting between the leaders of the elemental nations and the leader of the United Whirlpool Nation. The shinobi and villagers who had heard what the jonin had said began to worry as they knew that the war against the Akatsuki was going bad. They just didn't know it was that bad. Meanwhile with the Akatsuki. It would appear that the shinobi alliance have turned to the west for help. Madara Ichiha said as he glanced at the figures that resided with him in the cave that contained the statue that held the biju that they had collected. Over time their numbers had diminished to him, Zetsu, Didara, Sasori and their temporary ally Orochimaru. Itachi Ichiha had been killed by himself when he tried to kill him with his back turned. It turned out that the man had never truly betrayed Konoha and had been ordered to massacre the Ichiha clan and then join their organization in order to keep track of them. This Amhashigaki had been killed when he tried to take on the Hachibis Jinchiriki. The man had been able to defeat him, but not before falling unconscious and becoming easy for Madara to come and take him without resistance. The Kazu and Haiden had been killed by the Nibis Jinchiriki and an unknown man that they still hadn't identified. The reason why the zombie brothers were dead when people thought they couldn't die was because their bodies were completely obliterated so that nothing was left. Pain, or Nagato as he was called, and Conan had been killed by Madara himself when he decided that he wanted one of his Rinnegan eyes. The pair had put up a tough fight that had even left Madara wounded for weeks before he fully recovered. Only to end up with destroyed Rinnegan eyes that were useless to him. We should easily beat them, un. They can't even use chakra, un. Dadara boasted as he flexed the mouths on his hands. Shut up Dadara. You shouldn't judge people on appearances alone. Sasori advised as the others nodded along with him in agreement. Coo coo coo, I'll have my spies work on their strengths and we will see if they are a threat. After all I don't want any more extra obstacles between me and Sasuke kun. Orochimaru hissed with a smirk in place as he summoned Kabuto to send a message to his spies. No matter. Zetsu I want you to do the same as I don't trust the snake to give us all the information he acquires. Mardara stated. As you wish. Zetsu replied as he sank into the ground, vanishing from view. Time skip. Morning Kanoha. Hey Karen good luck Tsunade-sama. Hinata shouted as her and the other shinobi and villagers stood at the gate to bid her goodbye. I will Hinata. Take care everyone we should be back the next day or the day after. Tsunade replied as she, Guy and Kakashi waved farewell and started their trip to the Naha port in Kurigakur. Iwa. Guritsuchi sama look after Tsuchikage-sama. An Iwa villager shouted as said person grinned and waved in response. She and Akatsuchi were her grandfather's bodyguards for the meeting and were just about to set off. The Fitsuchikage's back hadn't thrown itself out when he tried pick up a backpack. Ow. 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 Damn this traitorous back of mine. Told you you were too old to have the hat, maybe you should hand it over to me now while we have the chance. Kuritsuchi joked as she only received a death glare from the Tsuchikage. HMPH. Anoki replied before all three used their ability to fly to get to the Naha port on time for the meeting with the cheers, and in some cases laughing, of the villagers and shinobi behind them. Kiri. Make sure you take care of Mei-sama, Aoi, Chijuro. The Miss Shinobi shouted as they and the other villagers gave similar words of encouragement. No worries. By the time we come back the alliance hopefully we will have another ally to help us in our struggle. Mei announced as her villagers cheered in response. Let's go. We should be the first to arrive considering the port is in our nation. Mei said as the trio made their way past the gates to their village. Hi, Mei-sama. A nervous Shijuro said as he received a whack to the back of his head from Aoi. HMPH, in my time men didn't break down like that. Break Mei thought as a dark aura started to appear around her. I mean what happens when you are up and in an engagement with the enemy. Up engagement Mei continued to think. Her dark aura becoming more dense. 
Turning to Aoi and closing her only visible her, she gave him a sickly sweet smile, as she said in an equally toned voice. Aoi shut up or I'll kill you. Ah. What did I do wrong? Aoi exasperated as he jumped back a few steps in fright. Kumo. Barry, see, make sure Raikage-sama is safe and keep him in line. Don't want his emotions to get in the way if he screws up. Kami he almost did during the Gokage summit. Mabui said with amusement in her eyes as she and other villagers and shinobi bid their Raikage luck with gaining another ally. Don't worry Mabui-san. Raikage-sama will keep his emotions in check. Right Raikage-sama. C questioned as his companion smirked at the slight sweat the Raikage had when he was questioned. Yeah sure, clears his throat well come on now Derry, C, let's go before we are late. A stuttered slightly before recovering and finishing with a conviction in his voice that made many of the others smirk at the Raikage's slip up and posture from his usually stuck up personality. Many hours later at the Naha port. The port itself was very large. The docking being large enough to hold a whole street. Problem with this design being that the town in the port being small and compact in order to not use up any more space. Originally it was designed to hold what the elemental nations deemed as deep sea ships that could not go into the shallows. What they didn't take into account was that there were vessels that were even larger than what they saw as deep sea ships, and that is exactly what the five Kages and Mifune were facing for in front of them a long way away was a huge ship that was made of metal. They also noticed that it also contained other metal-like things and that it could carry more men than they thought possible. And. CV-67 aircraft carrier. Oh my. Tsunade stated as she and the other leaders of the alliance could only nod in surprise at how orderly the Owen's forces were. It was then they noticed that a number of differently clothed men boarded the strange metal objects that were resting on the deck of the ship. They then saw the blades on top of the objects start to spin at blinding speeds, and, much to their shock, the objects started to fly in their direction. That was a feat that only the Tsuchikage and his top shinobi could perform. As they got closer they heard the chopping noise the objects made and saw the uniforms that, what they could only presume as, the soldiers wore were very odd to them. Imagine Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 US Rangers, Desert Version. The objects seemed to form a backwards triangle with the two on either side of the middle one further in front. Eventually they felt the force being projected from the rotating blades and had to use their arms to shield themselves from the dust being kicked up. By what youthful ideas the West have brought. Guy shouted, seemingly unaffected by the force being exerted. Though none were surprised given his insane training routine and his specialization in Tejutsu. Soon the objects landed, and once the blades started to slow down the soldiers disembarked carrying weird objects, Colt M16A2, from their transports, and lined up on either side to form a path perpendicular to the middle transport. And. Just like in Star Wars 4 when Darth Vader disembarks from his fighter in the Death Star. They then saw three figures stand up from the transport in rather unique looking armor, they are dressed as Raiden from MGS4, including a trench coat only difference is that Naruto's is black, Yujito's blue and Fu's green. Also it is entirely removable, they have have dual fabric Nacional A57 on their sides, and they each have a Colt M4A1 SOP mod strapped to their back. Naruto has a shotgun attachment, Yujito has a foregrip, and Fu has a grenade launcher. All three also have a COG scopes. Add in the usual daggers and serrated sword, and that's their outfit completed. Once the leaders got a clear sight at the three they could only stare with open mouths in shock. They were none other than the only Jinchuriki that Madara still did not possess yet. Tsunade, Kakashi, Gai, A, Dari and C were more affected than the others. Especially when they saw the sunny blonde hair of Naruto and the pale blonde hair of Yujito. And. Fu's leader Shibuki can't be present as he is represented by Mifune. Walking down past his soldiers, who saluted him as he passed, Naruto made his way to the shocked leaders, and he and his wives couldn't help but smirk at the frozen looks that were plastered on the leaders of the elemental nation's faces. Once he was in front of Tsunade, he gave a small chuckle that made her pay attention to him specifically rather than absently. Well Abasan it appears that you are in need of some help. Why don't we find a better place to talk about this alliance that you and the others want? No it can't be Tsunade thought as she looked at the armored man in front of her. The way he looked showed an aura of calmness, yet it showed authority and power beyond any she had seen before. Not even the Shou Daimei, Nidame, her own sensei the San Daimei or the Yan Daimei, commanded such an environment that made her and the other leaders feel insignificant. Soon the chopping noise made by the strange transportation slowed down and eventually ceased altogether. It was then that everyone got a better look at their newcomers. Naruto a panic-stricken Kakashi thought as his only visible eye widened in disbelief as he gazed at the student he so willing cast off, even though he didn't teach said student enough to be considered his sensei to begin with. Honestly a lecture on teamwork that even he didn't stand by, and a small description of tree walking that he didn't bother to help explaining to those who couldn't understand, do not count as teaching. 
Then a lot of emotions started to appear on his expression, the two most prominent ones being happiness and nervousness. Happiness from finding the boy, no man, after worrying about him for over a decade of his whereabouts and nervousness, because he was worried of Naruto's reaction to him and Konoha after everything they had done to him. I was on similar thoughts, but was not as worried as Kakashi was on how Naruto would react to him personally because, unlike his rival, he never did anything to him in the past to create any ill will between the two. Ujido. The group heard a shout as all eyes turned towards the other females, who were equally as armored as the blonde ex-leaf shinobi, though their coats were a different color, Yujido's blue and Fu's green. Upon recognizing them they discovered the two females were the Jinchurikas to the Nibi and the Nabi, and that their leader was the Jinchuriki to the QB. The yellow flash, Anoki muttered as he looked at the blonde with a slight fear in his eyes, as well as a small sweat running down his forehead. Everyone now looked at him, but their attention was then drawn back to Blonde when he gave a small laugh that somehow made the atmosphere less tense. I may look like my father, but I am not him. I'm his son Naruto Uzumaki, Shodai Mei Yuzukage of the United Whirlpool Nation, and son of Minato Namikaze, the Yondai Mei Hokage and Kishina Uzumaki, the Chishio no Habanero. Next to me are my second-in-commands and wives Yujido Nai Uzumaki and Fu Uzumaki. We came here today to officially begin negotiations between your alliance and my nation. Though there will be demands made and some may not be met, I hope that in the end everyone gains something out of it. Now do you have a room where we could all speak please? Naruto announced in a kind tone that made the leaders think that so far the relations were going well. Or so they thought. Yes of course please follow me. Mifun greeted with a neutral expression. Nodding back Naruto then turned back towards the soldiers that were still standing in the same position as before. Okay men at ease. Your orders are to set up a rendezvous point here and be prepared for immediate extraction. If you see anybody that has either a black cloak with red clouds printed on them, or they carry a hideate with a musical note on them, then contact me immediately. Do not attack them unless they attack first as we are not at war with them. That is what this meeting is about, however be cautious around them, and if they seem to be heading to our negotiations, then you may engage them as well, but do not prolong the battle. Understood. Naruto ordered and received a clear high Yuzuka Gay sama from said soldiers. Turning back to the Kages Naruto followed them into a big building, in which he assumed was the meeting place, with both of his wives following behind him. Negotiations Room. The room itself was dark, and it had two levels to it. On the bottom was a circular table with the insignia of each nation behind a chair on the wall, indicating where each person will seat. Above them were balconies where their bodyguards would stand watch over the proceedings. Once everyone took their seat their bodyguards were told to go up to the stands. While the elemental nation's ninja climbed with using the tree walking exercise Yujido and Fu just jumped up to the stands with little to no effort being used. This caused many of the shinobi present to stare wide-eyed. Nobody they knew could do that kind of jump, even with the aid of chakra. Only the use of the shunshin no jutsu could match that, but because of the sensitivity of the meeting, nobody was allowed to use ninner gain jutsu to avoid others thinking it was the beginning of an attack. What the hell have you been up to Gaki? Tsunade thought as she noticed that the armor they wore was very light, yet it offered protection from even chakra-enhanced weaponry. As everyone took a seat Naruto took off his trench coat and laid it on the back of his chair, revealing to everyone his full body armor. In addition to this he took off his weapons and placed them in front of him on the desk. Once everyone was seated Naruto took the time to observe his surroundings. Opposite him was Mifune. On his close left was Tsunade, next was A, then Inoki, then back to Mifune, after him was Mei, and then finally Gara was on his close right. Wow Gara made Kazikage. Good for him at least one us was able to gain the respect they deserved. Naruto thought as he gave a small smile and greeting towards the redeed. Said man smiled as well and nodded his head in respect for his brother that he had dubbed because of what he used to contain and the same burden that Naruto still carried. Mifune then stood up and addressed the table. As I represent all of the minor countries I will be the one to oversee this meeting and will step in when needed. Please may all participants avoid fighting as it will cause problems for the Shinobi Alliance in the future you may begin now. Mifune announced as he sat back down in his chair while silence temporarily loomed over the room. While everyone were trying to think of the best way to start the meeting, Naruto was beepizing each Kage with his armor and it displayed on his interface and I am talking about those plates that move in front of Raiden's eyes as he fights, all of their known abilities and personality. Ara no Sabaku, Gondai Mei Kazikage and son of the Yondai Mei Kazikage. Although he has improved himself overall he still relies too much on his sand, and so as a result, he is still weak at Tai and Gain Jutsu. Plus his ninjutsu is heavily sand-based. Personality-wise he is still monotone in just about everything that is official, and never lets his emotions rule his decision that isn't related to his family. The youngest Kage present. 
Naruto read on his interface as a hologram appeared of Gara, and the text appeared beneath it in a pale blue color. The picture though did not obscure his sight, and it didn't affect his posture, so the Kages didn't know that he was getting information from them. Inwardly he sniggered when he predicted their reactions. First would be shock from the abilities shown. Second would be anger from the revealing of said information. Third would be demands for the technology so that they could be used against each over in the future. Tsunade Senju, Gondai Mei Hokage and granddaughter to both Hashirama Senju and Mito Yuzumaki Senju. Medic Nin and is only one of two people to know her super strength jutsu, known to kill a person with one hit. Known to be the best medic in the elemental nations, and has had to suffer the loss of both her lover, Dan Kato, and her brother Nawaki Senju. As a slightly quick temper that can be taken advantage of, however she has a deep regret for banishing me, and wishing to make it up to me, mental side depending on her actions from now on, will determine her standing with me. A, Yon Dai Mare Ikage and son to the son de Ami Raikage. Only known user of the rate no Yoroi that enhances his speed to the point of being second only to Horatian and ex-partner to Killer B. Faced my father during the third shinobi war and lost but barely. Is known to allow his emotions to rule him at times, and was the one to call all the Kages together for the first meeting that resulted in the Shinobi Alliance. Anoki, San de Ami Tsuchikage. Only known user of the dust release, and. I would use the actual term for it, but it conflicts with swift release that enables the user to manipulate molecules and therefore gives them the ability to disintegrate anything on a molecular level. Only person alive to fight against Madara Chiha and still live. Has had dealings with Akatsuki in the past. HMPH I respect him for his ability to fight, but as a person I do not trust him. He is indirectly a reason that my kind were hunted down like animals, as he essentially gave them the finance for their organization. Mei Terumi, Gondai Mei Mizukagi and leader of the rebel forces that overthrew the San de Ami Mizukagi. Known user of the Yoten and only known user of Futen style of ninjutsu, and. Do not get that confused with Futen. Futen means boil release and Futen means wind release. She is very neutral when it comes to politics and is known to make good decisions, however has an anger problem when references to her past love life. Rumors say that Akatsuki originated from her nation, but our sources say it was a megakur that it came from. Mifun, leader of the samurai nation, Tetsu no Kuni. Has fought Sanchao no Hanzo in the past. Is also neutral and doesn't like to be involved in shinobi affairs. Made an exception because the Akatsuki threaten everyone and not just the ninja. Soon Gara mustered up enough courage to start off the proceedings. If I may be the first to open this discussion. First of all I would like say that we are in greatly need of your help with dealing with both of the Akatsuki and the Hidden Sound Village. What we mainly lack are the manpower, medical and other supplies that have become scarce. We were wondering if you could spare any to help win this war that would surely follow you if it were allowed to spread. I demand that you hand over Yujito to us as she is still a registered Kinoichi under Kumo. I already lost B to the Akatsuki I won't lose her to them as well. I shouted as he stood up in an attempt to be intimidating to the Yuzukage. Sighing from the predictability of the Raikage, Naruto turned and gave him a deadpan expression. Raikage don't know as much as I respect you for trying to protect Yujito-chan, then why didn't you send a search party for her when she was attacked by the Akatsuki in the first place? When I found her she was fighting two Akatsuki and was close to losing, when I intervened and saved her I asked her if she wanted to go back to Kumo. Her answer was no and added that you probably set her up since apparently you never cared about her. She said that whenever she was mistreated you ignored her, but when B was mistreated, you practically beat the offender to a bloody pulp. Then when she went missing my sources told me that you didn't even try to find her, but we have been informed that when B was captured, you practically declared that all the other nations were at fault for losing people of our kind. Don't make demands that you are not entitled to. Naruto started off in an even tone, but ended up loudly stating the Raikage's fault in the first negotiations. The look down, finding the floor more interesting at the moment after being verbally assaulted and being correct in each accusations, as he sat back down in his chair. Palming down Naruto turned back towards the other Kages, and he decided to make his opinion known. Now before anyone interrupts me I would like to make some suggestions. First of all my soldiers are designed to fight battles and not to go into espionage or spy related missions. With this in mind I can take care of the main front lines with your ninja and support or using them to do one of three things, assassinating, sabotage or information gathering. With me so far. Naruto questioned and receiving nods in response. Alright since my men do not have a chakra network or use chakra at all, they cannot be used for many stealth operations that involve hiding in plain sight. Stealth operations we can do, but if it involves disguising ourselves as the locals, then it will not work as it will look suspicious that they could not detect us leaking any chakra at all. Instead they would suspect that we are ninjas who can hide our chakra signature to a very high extent. Dot. 
Then I believe that we can leave the main fighting to your men Yuzuka Gay Dono, however, as part of these negotiations I am willing to have that seal we put on you, that restricts your ability to form hand seals removed, if you could provide us with the medical supplies we need. Tsunade offered as she wanted to repair her somewhat shaky relationship her fellow blonde. His response was a chuckle that, unlike the laugh near the beginning of the meeting, didn't have any humor in it. Hokage Dono I know what you are trying to do and I do appreciate it. The problem is that Danzo, many of the leaders scowl at the name used a different seal than the one you wanted. While it did do its purpose he also tweaked it so that it permanently stopped my ability to use hand seals, Q gasps from the female attendants and deeper scowls from the males. Also because I had had it on for a long period time it became a part of me and so can't be removed. Normally the seal used would seal my memories of hand seals away so that I couldn't remember how to use them, however what Danzo did was use a seal that caused me great pain if I made the hand seals with an amount of chakra that exceeded the level set. So in short, I can still form the hand seals without chakra or I can use jutsu that requires chakra but doesn't require hand seals, such as the Rasengan. Naruto said as he received shocked looks from the other leaders in the room. The Kage's themselves couldn't help but sneer inwardly at the mention of Danzo. He had caused so many problems for them in the past, the Hokage included. Sending his root out to cause trouble all in the name of Konoha, or to be more specific himself. His belief that shinobi are emotionless tools was very disliked by everyone present and was the reason Saratobi was chosen as the Sandeami Hokage instead of himself. In recent years he has become more daring in operations and that because of his old age, he has become more delusional so that he went from just wanting to be Hokage to wanting the whole world to be ruled by Konoha and essentially himself. He had even gone so far as to suggest Konoha betray the alliance with the other nations. Seeing that they were getting off topic Anoki spoke up to get an answer to a question he had been thinking of since the idea for the alliance came about. Even though we all have had past grievances with Danzo, I question the effectiveness of your nation Yuzuka Gay Dono. As far as I know your forces will not be of much help to us, considering that they cannot use chakra, nor do they have a chakra network. Anoki snorted as the Yuzuka Gay's turn gaze turned to him. First of all do not think, for one minute, that my nation will be under the command of the Kage's present, nor their shinobi. Prejudices in the past have caused people in the Owen to be wary of people who can use chakra, even people like Rock Lee who may not be able to use chakra, unless it's to jutsu related, but still has a chakra network. In the face of this my forces will only answer to shinobi whose orders are approved by my army's counterparts, any shinobi who tries to force one of my forces to do an order will be considered a threat to my men and killed on sight or captured and put on court martial. This also means that my army will not stay in any hidden village in the efforts to avoid conflict between allies, no doubt that there will be some fool either in my army or yours's that will try to start something. As for their fighting prowess I propose a challenge I will face a shinobi or shinobis of your choosing without using chakra, you can even have a Hyuga use their Byakugan to be sure that I am not using chakra and instead of my using my own gear, I will use the standard equipment my men use to show you how efficient they can be. Naruto sternly told the Tsuchikage. The other Kages were thinking of possible opponents that would have high a chance of beating him, but before they could speak Tsunade decided to give a proposition of her own. If I may ask my fellow Kages, may I offer the challenge of the entire Konoha 11 facing Yu Yuzukage Dono in one-on-one -on -one fights in Konoha's Junin exam arena. They are all either Takubetsu Jonin or fully-fledged Jonin and are a suitable challenge, especially since a Kage is still a powerful opponent even when they deliberately weaken themselves. Tsunade offered as the other leaders considered a solution. In truth she wanted them to meet to get their problems sorted and off their chests. Back to the thoughts of the Kage's Ami thought it was a good idea. After all the Konoha 11 were known to be a group of very skilled Konohanin. That and they were the first generation to pass with eight of them being clan heirs, one from a civilian councilwoman, and two being orphans. And that they barely survived their first Chunin exams, with only the Nara being promoted. And. This confused me greatly in the canon. Naruto and Shikamaru are equally qualified to be Chunin. Shikamaru had the brains but lacked actual strength, and Naruto had plenty of strength but lacked brains, so they both stand on either side of the spectrum. Even then Naruto could still come up with plans on the spot whereas Shikamaru had to sit and think. That gives the enemy plenty of time to kill him the only reason it didn't happen was because Tamari hesitated and was confused by his thinking pose. And that officially they had beaten Orochimaru's personal jonin bodyguards known as the Sound Five, despite the fact that in reality they were mid-chunin in terms of actual power and skill. Yeah very powerful. I will accept your idea if the other Kages agree. Naruto spoke cheerfully, but his voice seemed to contain anything but that. This was picked up by everyone there, but only the Hokage, her bodyguards, the Kazikage and Naruto's wives knew why. Oh Naruto I'm so sorry I couldn't stop them. 
Tsunade thought as she bowed her head and allowed her bangs to cover her eyes, so as to not show how misty her eyes had become. Up on the balconies. What a fool I was and now because of said foolishness I lost my student, though I never taught him anything really significant, and my sensei's son no less. Kakashi thought. Inwardly he was close to being depressed again, since he was thinking back on his team's genin days. He was supposed to have taught them how to survive in the world of shinobi. Instead he focused on one student because he thought he owed it to said student's clan, and practically left his other two students to fend for themselves. One tried to defect and almost killed his comrade with a jutsu he taught him in the hopes of protecting them. Now he is a spoiled jonin who tries to take what he wants whenever he wants it. Another was a rabid fangirl that always tried to gain the attention his previously mentioned student and still does. The only change was that she now had training in Tsunade's jutsu, and. I know some people will be angry about the training with Tsunade, but I only really started to change from the canon at the Valley of the End where Naruto wins. So Sakura has already asked for training. As a compromise though I have decided that instead of a fully-fledged apprenticeship I have chosen to just some training to make her slightly better. Then finally was his last student. The one he abandoned in his hour of need and had earlier written off as a failure that wouldn't be assigned anything more important than gate guarding, whilst his comrades became either Jonin or Anbu. Now he is no longer his student, hasn't been for 10 years, and is now the leader of a nation that rivals all of the elemental nations put together, and has the population's full support. Yep that can be disheartening for a teacher who was one of the best jonin in Kanoha. I saw his companion's imminent depression, and thought it best to bring the one-eyed jonin back to earth. Placing a hand on his shoulder guy brought Kakashi's attention to him, as the man moved his head to meet the green spandex-clad ninja's calm face, staring back at him. As if sensing what Guy was going to say Kakashi I smiled and turned back to the meeting. Sai my eternal rival, if you had listened to my advice from the beginning, then you probably wouldn't be seeing this. If only you hadn't been obsessed with honoring Abito's memory, then you wouldn't have been blinded to the actions you committed. Guy thought as he remembered the talk he had with Kakashi when he was given Team 7. Flashback. It was a nice summer's day in Kanoha, and currently Guy and Kakashi were sitting in a BBQ restaurant having breakfast to prepare them for the day. So my eternal rival how youthful do you feel about taking on these youthful students of yours? Guy exuberantly questioned. Well Sasuke I'm sure will pass my challenges, and I am pretty sure that he will help his teammates pull through. Kakashi nonchalantly replied as he read his orange book. Upon hearing this guy's happy expression fell into one of confusion. Are you sure my rival? I read his mental examination reports. All of them state that he despises people trying to work with him. Though I'm sure those are exaggerated. Besides I am more worried about Naruto. The kids at Doben can't even make do the bunshin no jutsu. Kakashi said, waving off Guy's question. But he can do Kage bunshin no jutsu easily, and with the amount he can make, it's no wonder the bunshin no jutsu didn't work. Naruto-kun has too much chakra and wasn't provided with any advanced chakra controlling exercises except leaf balancing. Guy retorted. Ma, ma, it doesn't matter. As soon as Sasuke activates his Sharingan I'm going to train him privately so that he can master it and protect his comrades with it. Kakashi answered back to the now slightly frowning Jonin. It was then that guy realized something. Kakashi was describing Sasuke like he had Naruto's morals. Said morals were the same as his. Sasuke though would kill his teammates the moment they stood between him and his goal to kill Itachi. My youthful rival is a word of advice please move on from Abito's death, constantly mourning him like this will only cause unneeded problems for you, but before Guy could get in another word, Kakashi had already used Shunshin no Jutsu to travel to the Kiya Memorial Stone to mourn his friend for two hours before meeting his new team. The team that Guy believed would suffer because of Kakashi's unwillingness to move on. He was right. And flashback. And now because of your stubbornness your team became the opposite of what they were supposed to be. All teachers want their students to make it as high as possible. You only wanted one to succeed and the other two to stay where they were. However the one you expected to particularly fail became something beyond that of a simple Kage. His title may be a Kage, but his rule stretches across a land and population that equals all of the elemental nations put together. They support him and are willing to lay down their lives for him. His genius surpasses that of the Yan Daime, and we didn't see it. Kanoha lost its will of fire the moment Naruto was sentenced to be banished. Guy inwardly stated in a rare sense of seriousness. But the Kages. Before we give our decision we would like to know why you seem a little hostile towards the Kanoha 11 Yuzuka Dono. May asked Naruto with a raised eyebrow in confusion. It was then that Naruto sighed before changing his mood to one of a kind of sadness that the others recognized as one related to past problems. Folding his hands on one another and leaning on his elbows on the desk so that his mouth was hidden, Naruto responded to the red-haired Mizukagi. 
That is because 10 years ago the Konoha 11 used to be the Konoha 12. Naruto responded causing the other leaders, minus the Hokage and Kazikage, to look confounded at the blonde. Seeing that they needed a clearer explanation Naruto continued to talk about his banishment. Think about it I am the QB's Jinchuriki, and the last time the QB was spotted was attacking Konoha, where the Yandai Mei Hokage defeated him, and I turned 26 years old last 10th October, which is exactly 26 years since the QB's attack. I then grew up to become a shinobi of Konoha and graduated at the same time with the Konoha 11. I was placed on Team 7 with Sasuke Ichiha and Sakura Haruno, with Kakashi Hataki being our Jonin sensei. Time went on until the Ichiha defected from Konoha to Odo, and other members of the Konoha 11 along with me, were tasked to bring him back. In the end it was a success when I came back with the Ichiha on my back, however that was when things changed for the worst for me. I was accused of being too forceful even when it was clear that I was wounded more than the Ichiha. I was sentenced to be banished and between the time from being sentenced to actually being exiled, I was tortured by some of my former comrades because I hurt the Ichiha. Then my own sensei declared that I was never a student of his. Naruto concluded. It was then that he his interface showed all of the statistics of each of the Konoha 11 and saw that they hadn't changed at all, just that they were more proficient at their specialities were. An example being Tenten had only become better at weapons with very small improvements in her other areas. As he looked around he saw disappointing glares being sent to the Hokage, who was looking down in shame at how she allowed his torture to happen under her nose. Seeing the disappointing looks Naruto actually started to sneer at the other Kages, except for Gara, who was the only Kage not trying to bore his gaze towards the Senju. Don't look at her in that way, you're all responsible for similar transgressions against our kind. The Tsuchikage treats our kind like objects with constant references to them as it and even helped the Akatsuki by hiring them in the past, the Tsuchikage frowned. The Raikage didn't care if they weren't close to him personally, as shown by his past negligence to my wife before I met her, the Raikage looked down in shame, the Mizukagi didn't bother to use the only Byakugan user she had to check the Sandeami Mizukagi and see if he was under a gain jutsu, which was proven correct and could have avoided a civil war altogether. The Mizukagi also looked down in self-loathing so far the only village that seems to have my respect is Suna, and even then I am still cautious of them, since they used to treat Gara the same way as me. Naruto told them with an edge in his voice. It was disgusting with the way they immediately tried to blame someone when they were just as guilty and if not more guilty. After the other Kages had regained their composure, the Kazikage decided to speak up. Well then I would like to officially declare that tomorrow we will go to Konoha, where Yuzukage Dono will face the Konoha 11 in single combat, whilst using only the resources available to his soldiers. Gara stated as the rest of the table nodded in agreement. What will the stakes be? Naruto said as the others started thinking of possible results. If you fail to beat even one of the Konoha 11, then all the Jinchuriki will be put under our authority, and the Owen will be also be under our control. Anoki harshly said to Naruto who scowled deeply at the man in his threatening tone. QB growled from within Naruto's mind that now resembled a large forest instead of the cage it once was. Calm down Kurama, he may be a team just like the Achiha, but it wouldn't serve any purpose to kill him now. Naruto inwardly replied to his tenant. In addition he also heard low growling from his two wives, who were thinking similar things along with their biju. How dare he even now when he so desperately wants our help, he has the gale to threaten us like that. Hidden settled down, Naruto-kun has it under control. Don't worry that Tsuchikage will get what's coming to him later on. That old man, he's going senile. A moment ago he was practically begging for our help now he is demanding we become his slaves. I know young one, but don't worry Naruto will know what to do. He has proven many times that he can do the impossible, and he can do it again here. I agree to the terms, however should I win I want the fire daimyo to give me what should have been mine. Is Ushiagakur. Dot. The Kages were stunned at the demand. It was a rather important area for the elemental nations, rich in materials and minerals worth two daimyos. May I ask why you would demand such a thing? I asked in a curious tone. Leaning back in his chair Naruto fixed the man a stare that made the man shiver inwardly. Apart from the fact that I am in Yuzumaki, meaning that Yuzushio is mine by birthright, but also the stakes are equal. My country for Yuzushio, in fact when looking more closely at it, my United Whirlpool nation is much more valuable than Yuzushio, so be glad that I am not demanding for more. Naruto replied. Before anyone else could challenge him Mifune stood up. All right now that that has been sorted I would like to end this meeting and that we will meet again in Kanoha to evaluate the effectiveness of Yuzukage Dono's army. Mifune finished. Yes also as you have seen the kind of transports we have, I will be meeting you all on top of the Hokage monument. Naruto added as the table cleared themselves and headed out of the building, along with their bodyguards. Outside of the negotiations room. 
Naruto, Yujido and Fu were walking at brisk pace to reach their Bella One Iroquois, Yui, helicopters that were waiting for them to depart for the aircraft carrier, waiting for them return to discuss with his generals the results of the meeting. They mainly walked in silence until Yujido couldn't take the suspense any longer. You are playing a big risk here Naruto-kun, if you lose then everything we have worked so hard for will be in ruins. Yujido chastised her husband as the trio made their way back to their transports. Naruto sighed as he ran a hand over his head to clear his thoughts and ease the tension he obtained during the meeting. Looking at the concerned expression his face softened as he spoke in an equally soft voice. I know Yujito-chan, but rest assured I received the Konoha 11's individual profiles during the meeting, and trust me, they haven't improved much to be considered much of a threat to me. Dot. How so? Was the quick remark from his other wife. Looking thoughtful Naruto went for the scenario that best suited his statement. Which member would be best to describe his point? Lee, no. He had no choice but to specialize in Tejutsu. Denton, no. Her she could have diverged her type of weapons as before she only really used her own weapons. Then when he was almost out of members it finally hit him. Niji. Of course all he really progressed in was the Juken and hadn't widened his variety of Jutsu to make him a well-rounded shinobi. Then there was Sakura her mentality of a fangirl would make her vulnerable even with training from Tsunade. After a moment of silence his wives stared at him as they continued to walk without any reply until he snapped his fingers as if he had an epiphany of some kind. Niji Hyuga for example. His clan pride would not have allowed him to practice anything that wasn't approved of by the Hyuga clan. This means that his arsenal will mainly consist of Juken and other Hyuga clan jutsu. Also there is Sakura Haruno. She may have had training from Tsunade, however she hasn't gotten rid of her fangirl and superior attitude. That will be her downfall if goaded in the right way. Naruto finished explaining to his two wives. The two looked like they wanted to retort but decided to not. They had asked for an example and he gave them two, which was more than they asked for. Fine then, but I still say you're taking a big risk here. Yujito huffed as the trio finally made it to the Hueys that now were starting to rotate their blades for the imminent order to take them back to the CV-67, where the rest of the army was located. Helping his wives board the helicopters he gave the order for the pilot to take them back to the headquarters, HQ. After getting a high Yuzuka Gaysama the three helicopters took off and made their way to the large ship that many people were still gawking at, only to now stare in awe at their transports as they went past them. On the CV-67, codenamed. Baseplate. Upon arriving the leader of the Awan and his wives were greeted with numerous salutes, to which he returned with a smile and gave an order for a basic outfit for fresh soldiers to be prepared for him for tomorrow. Many of his subordinates were confused at the request but knew not argue with their superior when it was something important. As soon as everyone went back to their duties Naruto and his wives headed down towards the war room. This was the place where Naruto, his wives, captains and sergeants came to discuss strategies and other things that needed to be attended to. After passing numerous staff who saluted him and he returned they soon reached a white door that had the words war room written on the front in the font of impact. Next to it was a fingerprint and retinal scanner that only allowed those that meet the requirements access to the room. Naruto used his own hand and eye to be recognized through the scanner and after a green light shone on the door there was a robotic voice that stated access granted. This was then followed by the few clicks of a number of locks being released until the door automatically opened to reveal the room itself. The room was a brightly lit room with a red wooden table in the center. The floor was covered in a pale blue carpet and black leather chairs were situated at the table. Said table was rectangular in shape at one end with a chair slightly bigger than the others at one end and had a Owen flag on the wall behind. On the opposite wall had a large computer screen where many details could be listed. The walls themselves were colored in a deep maroon color. And. Imagine something similar to Call of Duty Black Ops where Mason meets Kennedy. All of his captains were already sitting in their seats and had their sergeant standing at attention behind them and all of them in their non-combat uniforms. And. Imagine Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, Shepard's uniform desert version. Each of their berets had a red swirl badge to signify their allegiance to him. In his army there were four ranks. Private, Sergeant, Captain and General. Privates were shown by a red swirl mark just above the elbow on each side of their arm sleeves. These people were considered the lowest of the low, or beginners. Their rank was worth slightly more than Gen in rank because all soldiers started their service at the age of 18 instead of 13 and were seen as more mature than children, especially when they had already gone through at least 10 years of education before being asked if they would like to join up. Some would join up and some wouldn't, if they did join then they would go through two years of training before being sent out. Some might think that when compared to the Hidden Village's three-year course that the Owens course was crap. Bear in mind though that most of the academies in the Hidden Villages mostly taught history and didn't teach the hardships of being in the military, making it look like a way to attain fame and power. 
then the Owen all soldiers were trained to expect the worst from killing people to being interrogated. Overall the Owen may not teach as long as the Hidden Villages academies, they do however teach the realistic and practicality side of being a soldier. Heck the 10 years of education before joining the army was considered to be better than the Hidden Villages academies. Especially since in the academy students were taught to recite what they were told, whereas the Owen public schools, and. Remember I mentioned in the summary that this fic would be a slight X over with the modern world, were taught to interpret history and come up with their own theories to situations, instead of acting like blind sheep or vengeful ignorant arrogant people. Like a certain hidden village whose name begins with K. After 10 years of education they are given the choice to join the Royal Uzumaki Army, or for short the Rua for two years. And. I know, not very original, but I couldn't come up with anything else, sorry. If anyone has any better names please end them and I will think about changing it, to which after that they are assigned to a squad under the command of a sergeant, captain or general. Back to the topic at hand next rank to follow them is sergeant and were the only people considered non-commissioned officers, NCO. Their rank is shown by three red swirls forming an upside down triangle. They have more experience than the privates and have command over them. Therefore privates must listen to their orders unless told otherwise by either another sergeant, a captain or a general. Captains were a different matter as they, along with generals, were known as commissioned officers, co. Their rank was shown by three golden swirls sewn onto the shoulders of their uniform. To become one a person must have the following requirements. 1. They must have attained the rank of sergeant. 2. They must have three years of experience. 3. They must pass the captaincy exam, and. Imagine a more harder version of the Chunin exam. 4. Finally they must be supported by all the generals. Their responsibility lies with commanding a squad of men, and. That will be explained later on, along with their sergeants, and they only answer to the generals. Then finally the generals. These people are the highest rank in the army and have the responsibility of running it. Only Naruto, Yujito and Fu held this rank, and this was symbolized by the armor they wore, that only generals were allowed to wear. The trench coats they wore before were not their official coats as they were funnily enough still being made, and. Pick can be found on profile. Only the code is needed ignore everything else. Anyway if they ever wanted a new general then one of them would have had to retire and pass it on to someone else. Seated at the table were five captains. Each one had a speciality that his or her squad excelled in. Akio Fujita. She had brown hair that just reached her neck, had crimson eyes and stood at 5'5". Five five. She was the commander of the 1st Infantry Squad and it was mostly a general combat unit that revolved around the same jack of all trades, but master of none. Or in her case it would be Jill of Trades, but master none whichever works best. Next was Sato Hikado. He had sandy blonde hair that was flat and cut short to it almost being non-existent, had jade eyes and stood at 5'6". He was the commander of the 2nd Infantry Squad and was the same kind of outfit as the 1st Infantry Squad. After him was Takahasa Yamagata. He had red hair that also flat and cut short, but only to about an inch's worth was left, had violet eyes and stood at 5'9". He too was in command of an infantry squad, the 3rd infantry squad to be exact, and it also was the same kind of unit as the 1st and 2nd infantry squads. Infantry squads aside the next captain was Inoue Kyoto. She had raven hair that was tied up into a bun, had coal black eyes and stood at 5'4". Unlike the other captains she was in charge of the 1st medic squad. They did not do any fighting, instead they set up field hospitals, worked at already existing hospitals as doctors and nurses, and they trained field medics to be assigned to each of the other squads, in case one of them become wounded. Yamamoto Okiyama followed her. He had blue hair reach his chin, but surprisingly didn't obstruct his view, had brown eyes and stood at 5'8". He was in command of the 1st Airborne Squad, they were to man anything that involved the air, ranging from jets and bomber planes to helicopters and nuclear strikes. Following him was Sakamoto Kumamoto. He had green hair that was cut the same as Takahashi, had blue eyes and stood at 6. He was the captain for the 1st Armor Squad, who were to command all land vehicles from boats to tanks. Lastly was Kinjo Okinawa. He had brown hair pulled into a low ponytail, had honey brown eyes and stood at 5'7". He was in charge of the 1st Supply Squad, whose responsibility was to make sure that supplies were always available, ranging from bombs to medical kits. Upon seeing their generals they all stood up to attention and saluted simultaneously. Izuka Gay Sama. They chorused at the same time. Naruto smiled at the professionalism of his army. They were a cross between the Hokage Jiji's Will of Fire and Danzo's idea of shinobi tools. Both had merits and both had faults. Naruto viewed the world in a slightly different light that closely resembled the theory of yin and yang. That so long as one thing existed the opposite would also exist. So long as there was light there were also shadows. And where there were shadows there was light. There could never be one color. Only different shades of gray. 
The perfect example being the situations between the East and West. The East were in constant war and lost family and friends. People hardly found any life-lasting peace and had to struggle to survive, either from physical problems like killings by shinobi or mental problems such as prejudice. This led to the East gaining a very dark shade of grey. The West on the other hand found peace and unity. Friends and family prospered, and most losses were due to either old age or unfortunate accidents or incurable diseases. Therefore people were able to live safe lives and not have to constantly train and kill to survive. And thus the West gained a very light shade of grey. At ease captains, pause as the captains relax their stances now first I would like to say thank you for attending this meeting, as it affects everyone here, and it revolves around the call for an alliance from the elemental nations. Please may you take your seats ladies and gentlemen. Naruto greeted as the captains took their seats and awaited for Naruto to continue. Seating in the chair at the end of the table and Yujito and Fu moving to sit in the chairs immediately next to him, Naruto picked up the remote control for the screen on the opposite wall and switched it on. Alright the alliance was called for by the following people. Tsunade Senju, Gondai Mei Hokage of Konoha. The screen gave a flash and blipped as an image of Tsunade appeared and covered the whole wall. Wolf whistled damn that lady has huge knockers slam, shut up pervert. Inoue whispered harshly to Sakamoto and retracted her fist from his head, which now sported a rather large swelling. This caused many in the room to snicker at the man's suffering, before a cough from Naruto told them to focus, though he and his wives had smirks adorning their features. Kafya well I wouldn't try anything she is actually an old lady and uses a game jutsu to look young. Naruto said, causing many at the table to openly laugh at the gaping mouth Sakamoto now had. Anyway back to the reason at hand. She along with Gara no Sabaku, the Gondai make his ikage. The picture of Gara appeared. Anoki, the San de Ami Tsuchikage. Another picture showed, but this time of the Tsuchikage. Mei Turumi, the Gondai Mei Mizukagi. The next picture showed Mei as the Mizukagi. Bei, the Yondai Marikage. The picture of him shocked the generals slightly at seeing at how bulky the man was and noted that he seemed to have become the Raikage, mainly because of strength and body and not mind. And Mifune, leader of the Samurai and Tetsu no Kuni, asked for an alliance between their Shinobi Alliance and our United Whirlpool Nations. Safe to say that the negotiations went as I expected. Naruto stated as more pictures started to show until all the leaders were now on the screen. After getting their appearances down in detail, Sakamoto paying extra detail to the Mizukagi, they all noticed what Naruto had said at the end. What do you mean Naruto-sama? Akio asked as the other captains listened into his response. When I went to this meeting I expected it to be a slow in progress, and suffice to say I was right, because since this army can't use chakra, the Tsuchikage was convinced that we would not be able to provide anything of value. So he made a bet with me, Naruto replied as the captains became angry at the accusation. What were the rewards and conditions, Naruto-sama? Kinjo questioned as the others nodded in anticipation. The stakes were the United Whirlpool Nation and Yuzushi Agakur. The bed itself is a one-on-one -on -one tournament between the Kanoha Eleven and I. The rules being that I must only use equipment available to fresh soldiers and that I get to rest between each match. Naruto finished explaining the bet to his captains. The captains themselves grinned at the prospect of seeing some of the most elite shinobi of Konoha and their leaders past tormentors, humiliated by their leader with only the equipment available to new soldiers. Then they would gain more contracts with traders, thereby gaining a higher economy. The best part was the experience their soldiers would gain by being escorts to the traders. Finally they could use Yuzushio as a main port to their ships, as it was the only elemental nation that had the deep seas available to make building ports faster. So when will this happen? Takahashi asked with a grin. Grinning back Naruto replied, tomorrow a Kano has Chunin exam stadium. We and I mean all of us aside from the sergeants, sorry guys, but I need you on watch in case something happens, the sergeant smiled and nodded an understanding thank you for understanding, and so we will be given seats for everyone but me to watch the event. There will also be potential clients that may want to do business with our nation. From there I will face each of the Kanoha 11 in one-on-one -on -one combat matches, to which I must win all of them to win the bet. Dot. Nodding back in response Naruto decided to give his captain some advice for when they arrive at Kanoha. Before we finish this meeting I would like to give you some advice for when we arrive in Kanoha. Firstly as soon as we arrive I want you all to activate your hidden cameras. This way if you are attacked we will have proof that you were only defending yourselves as is within the rights of visitors. Second, control yourselves, the people there are capable of saying some very harmful things, and if you must get angry with them, then only insult back do not ever throw the first punch. Third, people will be curious about you and will try to gain information indirectly through you, this is where my trust with you is at its highest for I trust you not to reveal anything they can use to their advantage. 
Then lastly be on guard, these people are known to bring in mobs to beat on people, Kami knows how many I was subjected to. If they do bring a mob to hunt you then stand your ground, use your flares to signal us and use lethal force if necessary, just make sure they are after you first, and they pull the first move. Other than that all I can say is enjoy yourselves, oh, and if you happen to go to Ichiraku Raymond's stand, then please tell them I've missed them, and I am willing to offer them a place in the Owen especially for them if they want to move. Naruto advised his captains, who nodded in response. Okay then meeting concluded and be ready at 9am for transportation. Naruto finished as everyone gave him and his wives salutes, before giving orders to their sergeants and leaving the room. Once they were gone Naruto let out a breath he didn't know he was holding. Damn that was a long meeting. He thought as he wiped away the sweat that had been forming on his forehead with his hand. He was about stand up before he was brought into a three-way kiss with his wives. The taste of their tongues and mouths were heavenly to the blonde as they had their own unique flavors. Yujito's had a hint of fish and milk, whilst Fu's tasted mostly of oranges. A few minutes passed until the need for air became apparent. Ijito chan Fu-chan, what brought this on? He questioned them. Their response was to grin before both started to grind themselves against him, causing all three to become aroused. We believe that you need some relaxation before the big event tomorrow Naruto-kun. Yujito purred as she placed her hand on his crotch as squeezed him slightly through his clothes. Glancing at the clock he noticed that it was only 7 pm. Plenty of time for some fun. He thought mischievously as he heard a go kid. From Karama. Grabbing his wives by their waists he disappears, and. That will be explained later on, to their bedroom to relax. And it was on that day that the west side of the ship wished Kami have mercy on those on the eastern side. For the sounds of Naruto making love to his wives certainly didn't. At the same time in Konoha, Hokage's tower. Tsunade sat at her desk, and next to her were the other Kages, all of whom had blank faces. In front of her desk were the Konoha Eleven, along with their sensei, Haruka and Anko. As Tsunade eyed each of the occupants many felt a chill run down their spines, especially those who she knew were responsible for Naruto's suffering. Tsunade seeing how nervous they were decided to present them the challenge that was agreed to. Okay the reason you are all here is because when we met with the Izukage, one of us accused his support as being inadequate, Tsunade, then glared at the Tsuchikage, who HMPH apostrophe D and looked away. Before she could continue she heard a snort from a certain raven-haired Avenger, and. He doesn't know Itachi is already dead. Turning towards the Ichihe she took note of him and his history. Sasuke was wearing the traditional jonin outfit and wore his hideate on his forehead. He also carried a tanto strapped vertically to the back of his right shoulder. After Naruto was banished he was immediately reinstated as a shinobi and was given no punishment, much to Tsunade's chagrin. In fact he was praised even more for getting rid of the demon, and it downright pissed her off that the man responsible for banishing the person she saw as a little brother. Something to say Ichihasan. She growled as the man gave his usual smirk. HN, yeah actually. Why do we need help from them? They can't even use chakra. In fact I say that we invade them and take over the west. Then enslave them as they should have been the moment they lost their chakra. Sasuke said with Sakura cheering him on. Mainly of the Kanoha Eleven wanted to disagree with him, but honestly didn't know what the Owen was capable of, so they kept quiet. Sasuke was about to rant on more, but was silenced by his sensei who grabbed his shoulder tightly. Sasuke was you there at the meeting between the Yazukage and the leaders of the Shinobi Alliance. Kakashi asked the Ichiha, who shook his head and was quiet. No. Well then Ichiha said it'll be best that you keep quiet because whatever they lack in chakra they made up for in technology. Tsunade snapped. Sasuke gritted his teeth and wanted to yell at the Hokage, but decided against it and went back to brooding and coming up with numerous ways to kill his brother. Boy was he going to be disappointed. Now that that is sorted let me tell you about the bet. The stakes were rather high to say the least. You, the Kanoha Eleven, will face the Izukage in a one-on-one -on -one battle tournament. The rules include that the Izukage must be allowed to rest between matches should he want to, and that the Izukage must use only equipment that are given to fresh soldiers. The rewards are if the Izukage wins then hi, no kuni must give the Owenyazushi Agakur, and all that it contained before the fire daimyo claimed it, but if the Izukage loses then the Owen all that it has will be given to the Shinobi Alliance without question. Tsunade announced as looks of shock mad their way to the other occupants of the room, minus those who already knew. The guy must be an arrogant as well as an idiotic leader if he wanted a losing wish like that. Sakura insulted as the people who were at the meeting looked at the pink-haired Kanoichi with an are you an idiot look. Well that is what you think. Now though I would like to conclude this meeting at an end and wish everybody a nice day. Tsunade concluded as the other Kages nodded and left the room to go to their hotel rooms for the night. The Kazikage though sent a small glare to the Ichiha and Haruno on his way out, though the Ichiha scoffed, and the Haruno glared. 
Once they had gone Tsunade took the time to observe the Jonin and Takubetsu Jonin that now stood presently. The Konoha 11 sensei hadn't changed at all, except for getting older. Haruka hadn't changed either, except that he was slightly cold towards his old students for disregarding his teachings on looking after comrades. Anko had changed slightly, only difference being that she no longer was a Takubetsu Jonin, but a fully-fledged Jonin, though it took a lot of convincing the council to allow her to take the exams. Niji Yuga, a Jonin and wore the standard Yuga Jonin robe, and. Apart from Sasuke and Naruto all of the Konoha 11 are wearing their Shippuden outfits. His attitude had changed greatly from his Genin days, namely he had dropped his entire fate complex and wasn't cold to everyone unless he believed they deserved it, like a certain Acheha and Banshee. Shikamaru Nara, a Jonin and wore standard Jonin clothes. He was still as lazy as ever, though his intelligence was showing more now than ever, and he had been increasing his physical training due to the war. He had also became the head of the Nara clan after his father was killed in battle with Samoto Jonin. Taoji Akamichi, a Jonin and wore samurai-like armor so that he could use his family jutsu efficiently, and he grew his hair out more. He still ate as much as he did before, and he was still quite cheerful, since his father passed on the title to him and retired. Shino Aburami, a Jonin and wore a big coat that covered him completely. He took over his clan when his father became too old to carry the title, and so became clan head. He was still as stoic as ever from his Jonin days, though he did show a bit of emotion from time to time. Ino Yamanaka, a Takubetsu Jonin and wore a more older version of her Jonin outfit. She was the clan head, but her father still worked in the TI, torture and interrogation, department. She was also more level-headed from her Jonin days, her abuse of Naruto before his banishment being the most influential. Hiba Inuzuka, a Takubetsu Jonin, but was not a clan head and wore a dark jacket and pants. His partner, Akamaru, had grown to a height that allowed Kiba to ride him if needed. His attitude hadn't changed much, still brash and hard-headed, though he was a little bit more calmer than before. His mother was still clan head, but was planning to give him the title soon. Anata Hyuga, a Takubetsu Jonin, but was also not a clan head and wore a blue and white coat and pants. She was still shy, but only it had lessened down by a lot. She was due to be the new clan head, but the clan elders were giving Hiashi trouble with it, claiming that she wasn't good enough. The day she was still hurting over what she had done to Naruto and was waiting to apologize to him when she got the chance, especially when shortly after he was banished and she found out the truth she broke down crying and sobbing. It took two weeks to get her back on duty and when she did she was for a time quiet and unresponsive. Denton, a Takubetsu Jonin and wore a white top and red pants. She had gained the title of Konoha's weapons mistress over the time she would constantly use her skills in weapon, using to gain a reputation. She hadn't changed much in terms of attitude, but no longer frowned over Niji as much as she did in her Genin days, and unlike Sakura, she wouldn't let it cloud her judgment. Rock Lee, a Jonin and wore the exact same thing as he did in his Genin days, but also wore the Jonin best along with it. He was so like Guy that many people got them confused, and the only way to tell them apart was if you knew them on a personal level to make the differences. Sakura Haruno, a Takubetsu Jonin and wore a red tank top and a pink skirt with black biker shorts. Apart from being a medic nin she had not changed at all. In fact apart from the jutsu tsunade taught her she was basically the same from her genin days. Still a fangirl and still annoyed everyone that didn't do as she ordered. Recently the girl had been demanding tsunade to give her the slug contract and pass on the title of slug sage to her. Tsunade said no and that the contract would be passed on to her first apprentice, Shizune. All right now that they are gone. I would like to say that the Yuzukage is a very powerful person. In fact when faced with the challenge he was confident, not arrogant, that he could do it. Also I would like to say that we all know the Izukage personally. Tsunade stated as the other occupants, minus those who knew, thought on who it could be. That's Naruto isn't Tsunade-sama. Hinata immediately said as the ones who didn't know snapped their heads to her in shock. It made sense since the only other person they knew personally, not quite right their lady, was Naruto. They were even more shocked when Tsunade nodded and opened her mouth to explain, but was cut off by a screech from Sakura. Abaka is the Izukage. Ha, we sealed his ability to use hand seals he can't have become powerful without them. Sakura screeched as the others winced slightly at her loud voice. What are you talking about, Lee can't use hand seals and look at him a full jonin using only tojutsu. So I wouldn't go underestimating him. After all many of you had done that before and look where that got you. Tsunade countered, pointedly looking at Sasuke and Niji. HN, so the dope is the leader of the West. This'll be easy. Sasuke arrogantly stated as he smirked again. I wouldn't be too sure of that, but if it's what you think then so be it, however do not go complaining if he beats you. Personally I want him to win, Kanoha has taken everything he should have had and made it their own without giving anything in return for it. 
Su Nade snapped at the Acheha, who scoffed at the thought of the dope being special. HN, what could the dope have had that was so special to Kanoha? Su Nade smirked and for some reason that made Sasuke very nervous all of a sudden. I'm glad you asked that. Firstly the Uzumaki clan were the ones who made the best seals, including the caged bird seal used by the Hyuga clan. When the Shodaime Hokage married Mito Uzumaki, the Hyuga clan had asked for a seal to keep the Byakugan safe. She did but she didn't put in the painful part of the seal, that was the Hyuga elders doing by bastardizing it. Next was the fact that due to the close ties with the Senju, the Uzumaki allowed Kanoha to use their clan symbol as a sign of friendship between the two nations. Today it is used on our Hideye Tanchun and Njon invests as a swirl on the back, but now the people don't know the origin of the symbol and now shame it by wearing it, especially those who abuse Naruto. Finally Izushio is Naruto's land by birthright since he is the only known Uzumaki of the royal Uzumaki clan of Uzushiagakur. Tsunade finished giving her long-winded speech. The others were shocked at how much Naruto's clan was worth to them and some began to question themselves. Some even began to imagine what it would be like without their symbol. It made them shiver at the thought. Right now though you need to prepare for tomorrow. You will report to the Chunin exam stadium to battle the Izukage in single combat. I will leave it up to you to decide the order of who will fight. Dismissed. Tsunade ordered as everyone bowed, minus Sasuke and Sakura, and disappeared in a series of shunshins. When they had gone Tsunade swiveled in her chair to look out the window over the once great Kanahagakur that her grandfather founded and that had now lost the ideas that he wanted it to believe in. I can only hope he doesn't permanently cripple them, and no doubt the council well the civilian council to be precise, will be furious to hear the news. Then the elders and Danzo will push for him to be killed or kidnapped and made into a human weapon, sight tomorrow's going to be a long day, and I am going to need a lot of sake to get rid of the headache that is going to come. Naruto even when you're not doing it intentionally you still cause me headaches. Tsunade tiredly thought, but had a small smile on regardless. Picking up her sake bottle, she poured herself a cup, gave a brief toast, downed the alcohol in one go, and prayed to Kami have mercy on her when the time came. Because tomorrow's events certainly won't. Meanwhile at the Akatsuki base. I see so the missing Jinchuriki have been found, and it turns out that the QB's Jinchuriki is the Izukage of the United Whirlpool Nation. This is both good and bad. Good because I can now have the tools needed for the Tsuki no Mikakaku, but bad because we may have more enemies to deal with, even though most of his army will stay in the Owen to guard it from us. Unlike those Kages I will not underestimate them, it would only lead to our downfall, especially since when applied to Naruto Uzumaki his opponent tends to lose. Zetsu keep an eye on them and report to me the results of this bet made. Everyone else be prepared for the future. Madara ordered before disappearing using Jikikanido. Orochimaru was surprised that the QB brat was the leader of the Owen, but wasn't concerned about that. No matter I will soon have the Sharingan from Sasuke Kun, and when I do I will gain the Manjekyo Sharingan. Next I will trade them for Itachi's eyes, and then gain the Eternal Manjekyo Sharingan, and then the legendary Rinnegan. Coo, 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 coo. And with that Orochimaru slivered back to Itagakur where he proceeded to make more plans for the future. The end. So how was this part, I hope you like it. And if you like it share this part with your friends and like the video too. And don't forget to subscribe our channel for daily awesome fanfiction. Okay it's time for me to go. Bye bye.